Greetings all, it's Blue Knight, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. Previously, we went through the Bulbling Camp, and ended up here at the doorstep of the next dungeon of the game, the coliseum -esque structure, which, if I remember correctly, Aru said that was a prison for those who were sentenced to death, and apparently, this might be the location where the Mirror Twilight could reside. I mean, all sides have been pointing towards this place, so it's gotta contain something valuable. Today, we're gonna enter this next dungeon. Like I said, it's a fan favorite, as well as one of my favorites. But first, we're gonna turn back and get some stuff. <laughs> because there is a pole back here. After you do save yourself from the fire. That you can't easily miss out on. And trust me, you want to get this now. Because once you start this dungeon, or at least when you finish it up, there's going to be an easier way to come back here. <laughs> Didn't take this pole long to make this place its home. But unfortunately, we're going to evict it just as fast as it came in. And that makes soul number 36. Now, the real reason I actually want to come back here was not just to go through this place again. It's that going back to the little camp before this big one, I missed out on a choo-choo spot that we could find a cavern. Let's go back outside quickly. And it should be among a... Bunch of skulls. That's how we can find this next place. Oh, hello there. There's another one. Another power. Among these stupid levers. I guess they get the hit from last time, and they're not getting it here either. They prevent me from getting that pole soul. It's not nice of them. Well, at least we're not in a close space this time, so we can take this thing up very easily. And that makes soul number 37. Uh, we're almost at least two thirds of the way there when it comes to getting those souls now. And it should be over here. Oh! Look at that! I missed out on our chest. <laughs> Bundle of arrows. I think I'm maxed out on those by now. No, actually, I'm uh, three years three years short of maxed out my quiver. Alright, so almost there, but still. It was close enough. So the uh, location of Kafai was probably in uh, one of the corners that we destroyed. But well, they both had chests, so I assume that they had nothing else over here. I was more looking for a bunch of uh, uh, skulls uh, that I could find. That's going to be my marker to find this choo-choo cavern. Finally, I found ya! It was just a little farther away from the camp than I realized. And sure enough, there's a bunch of Jews in here. There isn't anything specific I want to show off, but I could get that blue... Uh, well, it used to exist. I could get that blue chew, but uh, truth be told, I'm all filled up with my bottles when it comes to chew jelly. And I think I may have gone a little overboard on what I have contained inside these bottles. If you've been able to keep track of until now, in my current possession, I contain two blue potions, the rare chew jelly that I found some time back that I never used, and the Great Fairy's Tears that we just got from Jobani a little while ago. So I essentially have four full heals in my arsenal. <laughs> if this was like a three heart challenge run, I would probably be needing those, especially since two of those grant me temporary power boosts. But I think I may have got a little overboard when it came to filling up my my potions. <laughs> That's how my playstyle works. I usually prioritize health and defense over all else. Because I just can't do the whole brutish full frontal assault thing. It just doesn't work for me. That's because whenever I try to take that approach, 
it auto backfires, so that's why I play defensively. You may see I might be going a little bit paranoid about the potions, but what else am I gonna use them for? Bait? Like, I'm not doing any fishing in this game, so why even bother using it for that? <laughs> And by mistake, uh, if I sail to the southeast, no, nope, to the southwest. Unfortunately, I didn't find any... Uh... I didn't find any... Yellow chews there, so I can fill up my lantern. Though, I don't think I'll need it much for what's coming up in the next dungeon. And even... If I did need to use it, I probably won't use it that much. Or I might find yellow shoes in there anyways. <laughs> Provided if I want to sacrifice using one of my full heals first. At the way that I've been playing, I'm probably not going to be using those for a long time. Yeah, I waited for it to be nighttime again. Big whoop, want to fight about it? I just like how this place looks better at night than it did in the day. <laughs> Really attributed to like the lighting and the night sky with the stars coming out. But speaking of which, I was able to capture a brief piece of footage of how beautiful the sunset looked in this game. I meant to do this back at, at the, the small bridge in the linear region, but the rain completely ruined the mood and the moment, so I couldn't capture it there. But I was able to find it while waiting for nighttime to come around, and it was really, really beautiful. I just want to show how the sunset was like at least once in this game because the look of this game does not get enough credit, especially the HD version. They did a really good job at just how to make this game look. <laughs> so finally got all the side pieces out of the way, and now I can focus on the task at hand, find the Mirror of Twilight. Welcome to the next dungeon of the game. A fan favorite one at that too. And one of my personal favorites to boot. The Arbiter's Grounds. Man, I never thought there would come the day where I find a desert themed temple of any sense to be one of my favorites in any sort of game, let alone a Zelda game. But this one is very well remembered as the one that I have the most fond memories of. I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna find a lot of Boltorbs here since this opening bit is a bit sandy. For lack of a better term. Clear about like, as simple as before. Just pull out the claw shot. Exterminate with the sword. And speaking of the claw shot, you can use that to latch over here onto that grate, which acts as a target. Gotta make sure not to fall into that uh, quicksand area. You can ignore the bolt drops if you want, they don't provide that much threat or a uh, big reward either, like I stated before. They're just the moves of the desert area. We're going next. Well, obviously forward, but it's not going to be that simple. So we'll head over here. And looks like we found one of the new enemies of this dungeon. This is a stall child. Or a stall kid, which is the more appropriate term for what I've seen. Either or... It's a children of Stalfos. That's pretty much what these little guys are. Just tiny soldiers that want to threaten you, but they're not really that threatening. You can walk over there to the quicksand, or just use a claw shot to make it closer. I said before that the claw shot can make like small items like rupees or hearts come closer to you. It can also apply here for these chains. I thought those, uh... Come on, come on, Link. Oh, thank you. I thought I was gonna sink there for a moment. I was gonna say, the... The doors for here, I thought they would be, like, timed. Like, the chain would 
slowly pull back when uh, you did pull it out at first. That's what I was kind of expecting, but it didn't happen. Which is good. And that was a small key. We also needed that to get through the lock we just saw. Oh crap. Oh no. These things. Alright, gotta get rid of them. There we go. Just a simple slash or a spin rather. We'll get rid of them. I don't know what those are right now are called. I think they're like ants or beetles. I think they're beetles because that would fit more with the this uh, temple a little better, but they'll just try to swarm you to slow down your movement, especially over quicksand. That's the worst timing you could get on get these guys on you. Just use a simple spin attack, and you'll get rid of them. I also saw this over here. I did say earlier that I was worried about my lantern fuel. Now look at that. We found a tub full of lantern oil or a pot rather. So this will tell us that we gotta use a ladder at some point in this dungeon, or maybe at various points. But at least I got that uh, filled up again. And speaking of which, we can use it right here. Alright Gabe, whatever you say. Wanna be stall kid? This could be a swarm of them. This can't be a kind of scary if you see like a lot of coming your way. But we got the master storm, we can deal with these guys no problem. So it can be very uh, foreboding if you're not like as brave as Link, uh, or if you're in a situation yourself. It can be a little frightening. They just come everywhere. I mean, look at this. <laughs> They're just swarming all over this place. <laughs> now like this up. Get over here too. Careful of that little stall kid. Now I that up too. And now I can enter through there. Easy peasy. And now I enter into like the main hall of the Arbiter's Grounds of Sorts. Wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. Huh? More rupees and more hearts. I'll definitely have to make use of that magic armor at some point in this dungeon. I'm getting way too many rupees now. That could be both a, a good and a bad thing, but mostly a good thing now since we got all the expensive stuff out of the way. Alright, so we just got those flames stolen by these lanterns. Well, there's a pretty simple explanation as to why that happened. We just found ourselves another type of pole. Uh, not an impole, this is more of a regular one. Uh, and these ones you gotta deal with a little differently. Uh, they just charge it right at them. Uh. You can pounce on them when you find an opening uh, and fight at them repeatedly. Uh. Oh, careful. When they light up, that's when they'll attack. But I think that's also when they become solid. Yeah, that's the opening that you gotta look for to attack them. And when they're down, rip their souls out. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, these poles count towards the soul count too. Which is kind of weird. Considering that we've got a lot of these by now, and now they're gonna make them a mandatory part of a dungeon? That kind of would have been suited better if this occurred like shortly after we learned about the pose. But no, this is the objective we gotta deal with now, is to get all those flames back from the pose that stole them. Kind of like Ocarina of Time's Force Temple. <laughs> Just for you to godsense, I see.
Not only that, we can learn the power set too, because we're gonna need to hunt these guys down as Wolf Lake. And now that we got the set, we can follow it to find out where the next pole lies. I'm pretty sure. And yeah, we don't have to follow it exactly because we can't go our own way if we want to. I don't think this way is going to be really safe right now. No, wait, there's a way over there. Take that bubble out. Get what's in here. And now we got 20 rupees. I'll open that up. I, have to, I can open it up, but I gotta push it. I want to push it. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think so. We have to do it with the uh, human lake. Can we pull it? No, I can't pull it either. No, I can. It's just not going to go anywhere. Alright, fine. What else? Guess we can't be here yet. I just wanted to investigate it just for the heck of it. We did see that we could go over here. With this door. That's why I do some exploring first so I can see what this place is looking like. Because it has been a while since I've been through here. Key that we need over there. Just better get some of this uh, dungeon's layout mapped out before we actually get the real map. We can't be here yet, so we gotta go into that dig spot as wolf form. So we're forced to go out to the post no matter what. I don't see how many souls we're up to. 38. We're right on track. Aha, that's what I thought. I figured I was going to be using something. Huh? So we get to that chest. The cloche over there, or just do what I did and go over there as wolf form. To get a piece of heart. That's the reason why I didn't want to miss that. Oh, oh, careful. Careful. The spots are gone now. I wonder if I can use my cloche anywhere. Oh, looking like it. That might be problematic. Maybe I can get over there by rolling. No, that kind of works too. Come on, Link. Come on. Work it. Work it. Excellent work. <laughs> kind of worried there for a moment. I thought he was going to make it. Another chest over there. Well, I see there's some bubbles there too. I'll stuck about easily. We can. Let's dive up. There. Okay, this get a lot more. That was a lot more fair than it should be. Fine, just use the use the blade, whatever. I thought using a couple of arrows would work, but they could have locked on to it after I took it down. Well, at least we got the dungeon map down. <laughs> that was fast. So I don't have to worry about wandering around anymore. I can finally use my mini map once again. Uh. Well, regardless, we're forced to go to that dig spot anywhere where the post set leaves. So it's not like we had any other option to go to. Oh, that actually unveiled a chain. I thought that was a dig spot. Alright, that drops the stairs down. Okay, I thought we had the bro underground for some reason. <laughs> nope, we had to be on chain. Alright, so now we're here. Gotta deal with that bubble over there, but I'm pretty sure that means something else. No, it's not here. Might be coming up soon though, from what I'm thinking. Uh. Don't throw those away too. Just desecrate the dead, why not? <laughs> We already done this much work so far, so why bother stopping? Not like any more pulse will come at us, because they won't. We'll have to go after them. 
That's what I was worried about. That thing over there? It might look familiar to you. You might remember it as a Gibdo, but this game classifies it as a Redead Knight. It's the same thing in a way. It's gonna try and scare you. To paralyze you. And then go on the attack. Cannot do a good job of going after Red instead. I think you hit A repeatedly to escape the fright state that you get casted in. I'm pretty sure you can also use a backslice to break out of it from what I looked up. Alright, go right. Yeah, there we go. I'll try to spam going to the left or right just to immediately go into the backslice as like a counter move. And thankfully it worked out. Could also use a health spider against that thing too. It's just you gotta attack it before it does shout first. That's the first and foremost thing you gotta worry about with those re-dead knights. I may just call them Gifto's just for the heck of it. Because that's essentially what they are. They're just re-deads but with big ass swords. That's what they that's what they that's basically are. Don't know why they feel the need to like Reclassify them because they have a weapon. <laughs> They're still the same creature deep down inside. They just have a big swing thing that they want to use now. And we'll be encountering those guys fairly often in this uh, dungeon, too. So those will definitely not be the last time we see those things. That's not supposed to be here now. I could go out there, but I think I'm getting a little too ahead of myself again. I think there's supposed to be somewhere I can claw shot in that very same room we were just did. Yep, I just I just saw the hole, but I think I got covered up. Yeah, I got covered up when I moved that thing again. Let's push on that. Open this up. And then claw shot our way upwards. Just gotta find the right target for that. Uh, is there a target? Yep, there is. Just have to find that great. And now, you can press on ahead. And we should be getting close to the second pole. Yep, it's right over there. Oh no, wait, I remember this room. Go to sets form. Well, let's deal with these bubbles first. Get them out of the way. Well, you probably get the idea what you're supposed to do. So I can deal with these things. These pesky nuisances. There's a bunch of ladders in here, but one of them is not like the others. Turn on the sense mode and find the real one. And then, just fight it like the last time. Wait for it to spin attack first. And then, go on the attack! I wonder if it's possible I can attack it before it does a spin move. Yep, it is! Just gotta be fast enough. And then rip its soul out like before! And that's two of the four poses exercised. As well as two of the four flames we need to get to the big door back in the main hall. And that's going to be going back to where it rightfully belongs. And I think we're going to stop things for today here. Wait, can I get that pole soul? Not soul it's set. No, I can't. So I guess it just lingers there, even though that goes nowhere now. But we're going to stop here for today. Right next to the Corpse? Question mark? What the cloak of what that Poe used to inhabit? Next time, we're gonna explore even more of the Arbiter's Grounds to find the rest of the flames. Until we meet again, farewell for now.